everybody, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So, our advanced color grading for DaVinci Resolve 17 is finally out. Fully updated, all the new features, all the information in the link below. So check that out if you're into Resolve, especially if you're into color grading in Resolve. So today in MapRake Studio, I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the magic mask that's available in version 17, studio only because it uses the neural engine, but not going into all the details of how to use magic mask, but rather a strategy for combining the magic mask with a qualifier in order to create selections that I think would be very, very difficult to do in any other way. Let's dive right in. So here we are in Resolve 17. I have this first clip selected. I have a balance node, which I'll toggle on and off there. And then I have a second node labeled MM for Magic Mask, and I haven't done anything yet. Magic Mask palette is right here, pretty much in the middle of the central palettes. And, and if you have never seen the Magic Mask, I wanna give you a basic sense of kind of how it works before we dive into our specific example. So it's kind of like an auto roto feature so that you don't have to manually rotoscope mats. And you can uh, select an entire person or features of a person, uh, meaning arms, clothing, face, hair, hat, legs, shoes. It's kind of amazing actually, but we'll just go to person for this example. I have uh, a woman running across this bridge here and I'll go to the end, start at the end. And by default, you already have this eyedropper tool selected to draw a stroke on the object that you wanna select. And you wanna draw a very short stroke usually works best. I'm going to draw a little stroke on her back there. And it doesn't look like anything happens, but if you click this little overlay button, uh, you'll see that it's created a mat or a mask around our subject here. It's very loose by default. And that actually can be very useful if you are using this as a garbage mat. For instance, if you're keying somebody off a green screen background, this can immediately eliminate all the background elements. So you can focus on just getting a good key very close to the subject. In our case though, we really want a tighter mask here. So you can immediately click better under quality and you'll see right away, it makes what looks to be a very good selection. Another way to look at that selection, by the way, if I turn off the overlay is to either click on the highlight button or press shift H and you'll also see that selection. In general, the selection is gonna have kind of a hard edge as you start out. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna turn that highlight back off and I'll turn my overlay back on. And once you have that selection made, which all we did is a single stroke, you can track it. So I'm gonna track backwards here and I'm gonna speed up this analysis because it can take a little bit of time. Once that analysis is done, you get a little check mark to indicate that that stroke has been tracked throughout the entire clip. You may need to add more. Usually you're gonna to need to step through this and find areas where it got off. And I'm just going a frame at a time here. And I'm not worried about things that aren't absolutely perfect here. And you'll find it can take some time to update as you move from frame to frame and back up a little bit of the shoe was missed there. So I can just add a stroke. This is kind of cool. Just add a stroke to select that shoe. And then I'm gonna track one frame forward here. I might not wanna keep that stroke there. It still looks okay there. I'll track one frame forward again. And still looks okay. And again, and it may start to move off of her foot at some point. Go one more. And that's probably all I need. So I'm just gonna hit delete, which will delete that stroke going forward. I don't need to track it anymore because if I step forward just with the right arrow key now, I'm not tracking to step forward. We see this foot loses a selection. So I'll add a little stroke for it. Tap the track one frame forward button. And then you can see it gets moved off of there. We could either move it back on, which in this case is hard because it's hiding. So instead what I can just do is hit delete and it gets rid of it here, but if I back up one frame, we still have that selection there. So that's the basic idea. You can walk through this and you can clean up the selection. For instance, here we're missing a little bit. I can draw a little stroke and include that and decide if I need to keep tracking that or not. And by doing this, you can build a pretty good selection out of it. Once you've done that, we need a little bit more right here, then you can color correct that particular object or the inverse. So this will invert the selection here. So for instance, by inverting it, I could say desaturate everything except for her and I'll turn off that overlay and I've desaturated everything else. 
You need to be a little bit careful and not really push a grade very hard here because the selection is not going to be perfect and you'll start to see some imperfections. You can do a lot of things to improve your selection over on the right side here, which I'm not going to take you through here in this short review. But increasing the radius, the consistency, the blur radius, these all can really help you get a better selection. However, the point of this particular tutorial here today is I want to show you how you can combine the magic mask with qualifiers to make selections that wouldn't otherwise be possible. So I'm going to jump over to this shot here. And we have a similar setup with a balance node, which I'll toggle off and on. And then this node MM that I haven't done anything to yet. And instead of starting with a magic mask, I'm going to start with a qualifier because it's by combining this qualifier with a magic mask that the magic mask really shines. So let's say I want to get a skin qualification here. I'll sample the skin, shift H, I'll turn on my highlight. And I'm just going to immediately jump over to try to refine it a little bit in order to get all of the skin tones selected. In particular for luminance, I need to lower the luminance in order to get this edge selected right here. And lowering the saturation gets the rest of his neck selected. And if I scrub through, I look like I have a good selection. Of course, the problem with this is that I've selected a lot of other things in the shot because the background has very similar hue, saturation, and luminance as his skin tones. So you might think, oh, well, you can just mask that. So I will. And that can help somewhat. But some of you already know the problem with this. So I'll mask them. And I'll also track that mask. And I'll just track everything here. And that's all great. But the problem is that some of these areas that have the same color, luminance, hue, and saturation, are touching his face. And you're just not going to get the mask close enough to get rid of those since they're actually touching. No matter how much you arrange this, it's going to be somewhat of an issue here. So this is where the magic mask really comes in handy. Now, before I get there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the qualifier. And I'll also turn off this window. And we're back to where we started. So if I go to the Magic Mask palette, and I'll select the person again, and I just need a short stroke, and I'll turn on my overlay, and you can see that's already done a very good selection. I'll choose Better again, because it'll tighten it up a little bit. And I'm not going to track it right now, just to save time, because assume the track will work. It does. He barely moves. Here's the cool thing, you know, for skin tone selection, this isn't good, right? Let me turn off the overlay and shift H for the highlight. And obviously this is not good for a skin tone selection because we selected his shirt and there's a little back here selected and his eyes and his teeth, so it's no good. However, when you apply the magic mask and a qualifier on the same node, you get the intersection of both just like you do with a qualifier and a power window. So if I go back to my qualifier and re-enable hue, saturation, and luminance, I'm getting the intersection of both of these different types of qualification, the qualifier and the magic mask. I don't even need to turn on our, our power window at this point because that intersection does a great job of selecting just the skin from the magic mask, uh, which is the intersection of that and the qualification from the qualifier. Now, I do have a little bit still selected there, which I can probably address in my magic mask simply by using the shrink and increasing the radius a bit. And then I made it meet a quick power window. But you can see how I'm actually able to create a great selection that I otherwise really couldn't do uh, with a qualifier and a tracked power window alone. With that selection made, I can go to my vector scope and check my skin tone, which is actually quite good. But let's just say I want to increase contrast a little bit and maybe mid-tone detail. I'll turn off my highlight and toggle that off and on. Another type of correction you can do is invert that selection like we saw with the runner. And in this case, I inverted that selection created by the qualifier intersecting the magic mask. And I use that outside selection in order to desaturate and slightly blur the background. This is another situation where selecting skin with a qualifier would be difficult because of the other colors that are in the shot here. And once again, using the magic mask can really help out. 
Here for the magic mask, I can go to features and choose arms, exposed skin, and immediately I get the intersection of those two. I can include the face as well and very quickly start to get a good selection that I can clean up by setting the quality to better and begin working the rest of the controls. So an example of what I did with that is, in this case, I was able to adjust the skin. I'll toggle that off and on. And because I could select clothing under features, which you can see down here, I added several strokes to select her clothing. I was able to select her clothing separate from the background and separate from her skin, which you simply couldn't do with any kind of qualifier because of all these colors. Command D to disable. And you can see I was able to make that dress pop without making any selection of the skin or the background. Finally, this is another example of a person wearing clothes that have similar hue saturation and luminance to the skin tones and the background as well. This is a really challenging shot to do a normal time of qualification on. If you set for the person, you can actually set, select the entire person here and then track him. And then you select the individual components of him as well. So what I did with him is I broke out the magic mask into several different nodes here combined with a layer mixer node. So I have the person himself, I'll toggle that off and on. So I was able to brighten up not just his clothes, but the entire person to bring him out of the background. Identify just the hat. If you look in the magic mask, I use the magic mask to track the hat and I needed several strokes to do so. And if I toggle that off and on, you can see I was able to change the color of his hat. You might be able to do that through a qualifier here as well in this case because the original hat color was different. And then I did a regular qualification on the flowers to make, give them a little pop. So bottom line is the Magic Mask, uh, available in the studio version only because it uses the DaVinci Resolve Neural Engine, is a really powerful way of creating selections, especially when you combine it with the qualifier to make selections that otherwise likely wouldn't be possible. So I hope you found that useful. I love using the combination of magic masks and qualifiers to make these more unusual selections that I find I actually need pretty frequently when working with skin tones. So subscribe if you find this information useful. Hit the bell to get notified so you'll know when a new episode is out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.